This last video for chapter 26 is I'll be looking at what you should do if you run a chi-square test and you reject a null, uh, meaning that there's at least one category that doesn't fit, uh, the distribution between each sample is not the same. It doesn't matter if it's a good news fit test or one of our table tests. You could do this either way. The calculation is going to be the same. It still uses the observed and the expected values, which you should have. Um, so we're going to look at the last example we did with the uh, political viewpoint and the thoughts on environmental spending. Okay, we did our test statistic, and I want you again to remember what's happening in our test statistic. We are looking at the difference. How far away is our observed for what we expected to happen for that category, for liberals and too little? We observed 127. What we expected to happen was a count of, of about 95. So the difference between there is what is measured for the test statistic. So we decided, since we rejected the null in this example, that there was a big enough difference, a statistical difference, for us to say that the proportions are not the same throughout each one of those categories. But now where is the difference? So we're going to look at something called the standardized residual. If the distribution is not the same across, you should check the standardized residual. And that is observed minus expected divided by the square root of expected. So we're not, you're going to get, since we're not squaring this, we are going to get some positive and negative values. Um, and the positive and negative values are going to tell us a little bit more about the difference and which one's higher, the observed or is the expected higher. Okay, so if we were to go through this with our last example, we have our observed values, we have our expected values, and again, just like before, this does take a little bit of time. Uh, most likely on a test, I wouldn't give you one that had uh, nine cells to do, but right now it's not horrible practice just to get the calculation down. Uh, also, if you can think of some shortcuts in your calculator, you can use some lists to calculate these as well. If you put all your values into two lists, you can use the observe the L1 minus L2 divide by the square root of L2. Or you can just go ahead and then just do the formula for each one of those cells. Okay, so if I was doing the first cell here, I would be doing 127 minus 95.495 divided by the square root of 95.495. Our standardized residual would be 3.224. Okay. Now, you're going to be comparing these to all of them. So really, it's kind of hard to say, is that big or small? Okay. It is kind of, you can kind of look at anything kind of like we did with standard, uh, standard deviation. Anything outside of two would be considered a fairly big standardized residual. So 3.224 is fairly big. And we said when I looked at these, 127 compared to 95, that is a fairly big difference. The next cell 158 compared to 157.11, there's a little closer. The residual is most likely going to be much smaller. So if I did that one, 158 minus 157.11 divided by square root of 157.11, the standardized residual is only 0 0.071. So an extremely small residual in this case. Okay, so why don't you go through and calculate one or two more to see, make sure you have the expect the, the uh, calculation down, uh, make sure you uh, are plugging it in correctly, uh, definitely with the parentheses in the numerator just to make sure the order of operations is good if you're not plugging it all in at one time. Okay. Here are what your standardized residual should be for this problem, and again, we have some positive, we have some negatives. The positive and negatives do tell us a little something. Okay. Positive values mean that there are more observed than we expected. So the 3.224, the 3.214 here, that means we observed more. We had more people fall into that category than we expected to happen. So that was something that might be unbalancing a little bit. The negative values, negative means that there are less observed. So the negative 3.175. We had a lot less observed in the liberals who thought we had spending too much than we expected to happen. Okay, so that's one thing that should be a part of your conclusion. Now, what you want to do for the conclusion, you don't need to talk about every single cell. Okay, you want to talk about some of the higher values because they're the ones that are making the big difference. That is something that we didn't expect to happen. So you'd want to talk about maybe the highest positive and the highest low, uh, the highest negative value in there. Now, in this case, 
3.224 and 3.214, they're fairly close to each other. So in my conclusion, I actually talked about both. The two highest positive residuals show that there were more liberals that think we spend too little and more conservatives that think we spend too much compared to what we expected. Okay? So in both those cases, we thought we saw and collected a lot more people that believed in those two that fit into that uh, category for those two variables than we expected to happen. Now, I also did talk about the negative. So the last part there, there are the fewest liberals who think we spend too much compared to what we expected and the rest of the sample. Okay, so there is uh, what my conclusion would read. Again, you don't need to talk about every single category, every single cell. Just pick out some of the highest values. And you might not talk about the highest positive and the highest negative. Okay, if there's not a extremely high negative, but there is only one extremely high positive, just talk about that one extremely high positive. Okay, you don't, you're not forced to talk about positive and negative. Talk about what's going to be obvious. In this case, we had um, some high positive values, some high negative values. So they're the ones that I decided to talk about. Okay, so it's on to your judgment what you want to do, but make sure you're talking about at least one of the values. Of the highest values and again anything above two in this case there's a lot that we did not expect to happen we had a lot of values that were above two so things were really all over the place uh, for this chart okay so that is the standardized residual if you reject the null for a chi-square test it's something you usually should do more likely than not I'm going to ask you to do that in part of the question so if it is a time test, you don't want to spend your time doing it unless you are asked to do it. Okay, So that should be the end of chapter 26.